All right, today I'm going to talk about dinosaurs, creation, the Bible, the global flood, and how all of this stuff kind of works out. Um, I remember growing up, and I remember I kind of believed that there was a God out there, um, and I wasn't really sure, but I thought there was prob that there seemed like there was a God. There might be a God out there. I wasn't so sure about Christianity and the Bible. Um, you know, my parents went to church and all of that, um, and of course I recently have earned my biotechnology degree and I'm going on for a higher degree and you know I remember just um I remember being totally in love with dinosaurs and thinking hey dinosaurs are great and I knew that there were um you know some religion I remember my mom had a bible storybook where she had a picture they had pictures of the garden of eden and there were pictures of dinosaurs in the garden of eden so my parents who were both christians they were both first generation Christians and I had said the sinner's prayer and all that when I was eight but you know just to kind of cover my butt uh, make sure that I had uh, at least with all these billions of religions out there I wanted to at least have uh, I thought it was good to have cover all my bases um, so to speak um, but like I said uh, later on in life I ended up investigating and I ended up finding out that there are scientists that believe in young earth creation as well as scientists believe in evolution and I realized um, if I'm going to be scientific about this I've got to look into both sides otherwise you know in my mind I use the term I said uh, if I just dismiss uh, what somebody's arguing just because they're a Christian and I'm saying well they're a Christian therefore they're biased then I'm just I'm no different than a racist I'm just um, I'm just dismissing one side because because, you know, I'm no different, I said I am no different than a racist. I'm just dismissing one side um, and assuming that they're biased. And later on I ended up investigating and I'm going to share with you today part of what I found uh, with regards to, at least with regards to dinosaurs. Um, one of the things, that one of the questions people ask, well, um, don't all scientists believe the dinosaurs lived and died millions of years ago? And the answer is no. Um, there's actually debate about this within the scientific community, and some people will say, well, there's no debate. Um, yes, there is. There's scientists debating for scientific reasons, therefore there is a debate within the scientific community. I mean, you have scientists debating. That's a debate within the scientific community. Um, that's not a pillow fight, or whatever it is, or whatever. That's a debate within the scientific community. Um, now, with regards to dinosaurs, um, first I'll give you the different view. I'll give you the two viewpoints, and then I will. I'll, I'll talk about some of the evidence. Um, the evolutionary viewpoint, or which is the mainstream viewpoint, they say, well, dinosaurs. Um, dinosaurs evolved from reptiles. Uh, they evolved from crocodilians, and they were around the around on Earth for millions of years and eventually um you know of course if you watch the mainstream stuff on television eventually they were wiped out by an asteroid millions of years ago and of course there's some debate about whether or not it was the asteroid and so the dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago and then tens of millions of years later the eventually human beings evolved you know during the time of the dinosaurs the most advanced uh mammals were not were rodents or not much more than rodents at most and then because the dinosaurs died out it left for it left a lot of room for mammals to be able to evolve they didn't have to worry about hiding in holes from predators quite as much and so it left them a lot more room to evolve into their niche and eventually human beings were the result of mammalian evolution and of course uh you know it does uh one of the uh things i want to address real quick is a lot of times i've seen christians that don't understand evolution and it's not good. Uh, they will try to argue against evolution even though they don't understand it and that just makes Christians look foolish and stupid and it's really a bad witness. I mean it really just gives um, you might as well be handing a sword you might as well be handing a gun to your enemy and letting him shoot you with it. That's how that's how bad it is when Christians try to argue against evolution but they don't understand it. Um, like I remember uh, growing up I had a teacher Sunday school teacher that uh, she said, well, if we see, if apes evolved into people, then why don't we see apes evolving into people today in the zoo? 
and it showed that she obviously did not understand evolution. And it, sh it showed uh, quite a bit of ignorance, and that's something that really turned me off to um, the idea of creation. Uh, it really turned me off to in Christianity in general. If you want to turn people off to Christianity and, and turn people off to creation, then you can either ignore uh, the fact that people have questions about evolution, dinosaurs, etc., or you can argue against evolution without knowing what you're talking about. Now, today, I'm like I said, I'm going to answer some of the questions about dinosaurs. And Now, the creation viewpoint says that this is the young earth creation viewpoint. I'm not talking about progressive creation. I'm not talking about um, some of the newer views out there called, like intelligent design. I'm talking about just young earth creation. And this is a viewpoint held by a minority of scientists, but there are quite a, they're a minority, but there's quite a few of them. Um, there's enough creation scientists out there to warrant a legitimate minority. And they argue that dinosaurs are created, um, they argue from the biblical perspective. They say, well, this evidence indicates that dinosaurs lived recently. That they, if they died out completely, then they've, that was a recent thing. Um, that wasn't something that happened millions of years ago. And they will say, this is what the evidence supports. And they'll say, well, we can't prove that dinosaurs are created on day six scientifically. Um, that has to, that's something that's historically recorded in the Bible. But they will say, hey, uh, from the scientific evidence, we see that the Earth is young, the the universe is young, the dinosaurs are young. Um, and by the way, there are actually hundreds of dating methods out there showing that the Earth and the universe are young, and only a handful to say that the Earth and the universe are old. And by the way, these handful don't even line up with each other. Um, but I will be talking more about those in a different video. But scientifically, if you have hundreds and hundreds of data points that say one thing, and a handful that say the that say something else, you go with the hundreds. Um, that's what we do in science, and we regard the. If I had hundreds of data points on a graph, and I had a handful that were somewhere else, you don't just go with the uh, the few other ones because you like them. You regard those as outliers, and you stick with the hundreds of data points that you actually have. And of course, you can redo your experiment and critic and uh, critique everything you did, and you know see if there was a reason for the outliers. But by and large, in science, a standard procedure is you have hundreds of data points that make one line, and you have a handful that contradict that line. You go with the hundreds. Um, you go with where this where the evidence leads, not where you don't make the evidence lead where you want it to lead. Now, um, according to creation, the dinosaurs are created uh, about the same time as man. Uh, in the Bible, it specifies that dinosaurs and humans were both created on day six. That's the day that God created uh, the land animals. Um, the birds, by the way, were created on day five. So that directly contradicts the idea that, um, that from a theological perspective, that would directly contradict any idea that birds evolved from dinosaurs or even that birds evolved from tree-dwelling lizards because the land animals are created on day six. Um, and uh, according to creation scientists, uh, dinosaurs, the dinosaurs we fossils we find today were largely a result of Noah's flood or the Great Flood. And there were dinosaurs on Noah's Ark, however, they did not reestablish themselves in the same types of numbers that we saw before the flood. And a lot of people ask, well, how is it possible that Noah could have brought all the animals onto the ark? I'll address the idea of dinosaurs um living recently in a few minutes, but people one of the big questions people ask is, well, we have these giant dinosaurs. How is it possible that Noah could put these huge animals onto the ark? And you know, of course you can ask people, well how big was the ark? Well I don't know. How big were the dinosaurs? Well I don't know. They were gigantic, but I don't know how big they were. Um in reality the average dinosaur by the way was about the size of a sheep. Uh, but even the the largest dinosaurs it didn't start out large. The largest dinosaur egg we've ever discovered was the size of a football. And that's something you could find out in any dinosaur book. It doesn't have to be from creation source. It can be from any source you want. Um, what we see in the movies with regards to an egg that's the size of a person or the size of a building, 
that's that's a fairy tale that it doesn't line up with science it doesn't line up with the discoveries in paleontology and there's also a lot of uh, physical problems with having an egg that's much larger than the size of a football um a football is about it's very very close to about how large the largest egg could physically possibly be because um the shell has to be a certain thick in a nutshell with anatomy the shell has to be a th certain thickness has to be um some of the properties that the shell has to have make the egg actually very fragile and if the egg were larger than a certain size then it would collapse under its own weight. So you're not going to have dinosaur eggs the size of a person or dinosaur eggs the size of a house. Um, but when Noah brought the animals onto the ark, um, specific, the number of animals he had to bring on the ark, there were three decks, and they've done calculations. They've calculated the number of animals Noah had to bring on the ark was about 14,000 animals. And these would have only taken up one deck, which is very, very sad. Um, because there were a lot of people, there were only eight people that survived the flood, and everybody else just chose to die. Um, they could have gotten on the ark, but they decided not to. And it's very similar to the fact that there were there are three persons in God. There's one God who is three persons: Son, Father, Holy Spirit. Only one way to Him, and that's Jesus Christ. And the door is wide open for anybody who will take it. This isn't a bigoted. I'm picking one particular group. This is an open invitation to everybody. Everybody can walk into the ark and be saved, but there's only one door. And a lot of people don't like that, but that's that's kind of that's a that was meant to that's a generally a subject for another time. But nobody is going to be in the future. Nobody's going to be going into hell ignorant. People are go, who go into hell will know, will have known that Jesus Christ is Lord, and they're just going to have chosen to reject and they're going to have chosen to reject God. It's not going to be, well, I didn't know. It's not going to be, well, there's some guy over in Africa who never heard of Jesus scenario. Anyway, I shouldn't have, uh, I, dig I shouldn't have digressed so much on that, but there was one deck, one arc with three decks, and they have done calculations that showed that it was about 14,000 animals. No, I didn't have to bring every species of animal into the, on the world onto the arc. I heard, one documentary that said, well, there are 50 million species in the world. How can Noah fit that many animals onto the ark? And first problem with that is I don't think that 50 million species includes just animals. And two, uh, we don't, how do you know there's only, that there's 50 million species? Because the scientific community has no idea how many species there are. I've seen numbers, uh, ranging from 3 million to 30 million. And then these guys throw out 50 million. Um, but Noah, the number of animals he had to bring on the ark was about 14,000. And these were just land-dwelling animals with that breathed through their nostrils. Noah didn't necessarily have to bring the insects onto the ark. He didn't have to bring worms, things like that. Uh, undoubtedly, with the dirty animals getting on the ark, there were probably some insects that got aboard, but they weren't the, they weren't the intended cargo. And one person asked, well, how is it? You know, you couldn't possibly have predators and uh, animal docile animals like sheep on the same boat because there's no way to keep the predators from eating each other. Yes, there is. It's called cages. Um, but keeping on going, like I said, the largest dinosaur egg was about the size of a football. And, well, now some of you will ask, how many dinosaurs do you have to bring on the ark? Now there's hundreds and hundreds of species of dinosaurs out there. Yes, but many of these species of dinosaurs are only known from one bone or one tooth. And a lot of these, these numbers are probably quite inflated. They're probably, I, I would not be surprised if they ended up finding out that some of these species were um, actually one species just repeated two or three or four or five times. That would not be an unreasonable question. Also, Noah didn't have to bring every species. He brought every kind onto the ark. Now, a kind is usually at the genus or family level. Um, you can... For example, he didn't have to bring all of the, he didn't have to bring lions, tigers, uh, smilodons, etc. onto the ark. He brought one pair of cats that later developed into house cats, bobcats, uh, smilodons, which are, which are saber-toothed cats, um, lions, tigers, jaguars, pumas, etc. Uh, now, with regards to dinosaurs, he probably only brought about 50 pairs of dinosaurs onto the ark because he didn't bring every species, he brought every kind. 
Now, what do you mean by kind? For example, these two dinosaurs are from different species, but they're probably part of the same kind. And unfortunately, no, we wouldn't know if these two uh, species would be able to interbreed and produce fertile offspring. Um, like I said, uh, for those of you who have taken high school biology, they usually define species as a group of animals that can reproduce fertile offspring. Um, however, that's very incomplete. That's high school. That's way oversimplified. Uh, dogs and wolves can produce fertile offspring, but they are still considered different species. Um, bobcats and house cats actually have a different number of chromosomes, um, but they can still produce fertile offspring. And the creationists would argue, and these are PhD, when, I'm, when I say creationists, I mean the PhD scientists who are advocating for a young earth. Um, they, ab they advocate the bobcats, house cats, lions, and tigers, like I said earlier, gave them just one pair of cats in Noah's Ark. Uh, so Noah didn't have to bring every species, he brought every kind, and they, were, they weren't the giant full-grown dinosaurs. Uh, when it comes to dinosaurs, they weren't the giant full-grown versions. They were more juveniles. They were the equivalent of teenager dinosaurs, more small. Um, or they could have been even younger than that. The idea is to repopulate the world, not to bring the granddad dinosaur onto the ark. Um, now some of you will ask, uh, some of you will say, well, um, I'm still not convinced because I haven't quite given evidence yet for um, this viewpoint. Right now, what I've done so far is just describe the viewpoints. I haven't really given you the scientific evidence for the creation viewpoint. I gave you logical arguments, logical scientific arguments about eggs, etc. However, I not really getting, I haven't really gotten the good stuff yet. Now, um, let's imagine a hypothetical scenario. Now, before I get to any science, let's uh, imagine a hypothetical scenario. Um, this was a dream that I had last night, and I think that this illustrates uh, the point very well. Let's say that we found, uh, this is a T-Rex, and uh, I know I'm going to get a million comments about a grown man playing with toys. I bought these for my nephew Ryan, and he may or may not get them. Um, <laughs> however, um, this is a T-Rex. Now let's say one day we had a paleontologist. Um, again, this is going along with the dream I had last night. They discovered dinosaur bones and she breaks them. She discovers some dinosaur bones and for whatever reason she has to break them in order to get them out of the rocks. Um, and when she breaks them, lo and behold, blood starts coming out. And soft tissue. Now those of you who are familiar with uh, your dinosaur books from growing up, you know that dinosaur soft tissue isn't really possible. You know that things have to fossilize in order to be preserved for millions of years. And in, uh, in science, we actually do know how long something can last. For example, uh, DNA. Um, in my dream last night, she discovered uh, the scientist discovered uh, dinosaur DNA. Now, of course, this is impossible. Because we know that DNA can't last more than 125,000 years before it's totally broken down. And this is even in the best conditions. I'm talking about liquid nitrogen type conditions in a laboratory. This is the very best. Um, this is not the kind of you just got thrown under a pile of dirt somewhere preservation. I'm talking about the very, very best conditions. You have to be 125... Uh, 125,000 years is the very, very best. Now, hypothetically, let's say that, uh, let's say that this actually happened. Let's say there was really a scientist that discovered dinosaur blood, dinos soft, uh, dinosaur tissue. It turns out the bones aren't really fossilized. Maybe the outside is, but that's not a fossilized bone. These bones are fresh. Now, would that cause us to question, uh, millions of years? A lot of you would say, well, yeah, but of course, you're an idiot. You're a creationist. Um, we're never going to find anything like that. Um, well, what I didn't tell you was that that's not a dream I had last night. Not at all. Uh, I don't know what I dreamed about last night, but it was nothing like that. Um, what I just described to you as a real event, as some of you probably guessed it was going to be. Um, I'm going to show you some of the pictures. I'm going to show you what that dinosaur soft tissue actually looked like. And by the way, yes, they found DNA. It's not supposed to be more than 125,000 years old. 
scientifically, if we find DNA, and it's just been sitting around, it's less than 125,000 years old. Now here, one second, let me show you some pictures. Alright, like I said, that is dinosaur bone marrow. That stuff's not supposed to be around. And there's a lot of biochemists that have objected saying, well, that can't be dinosaur bone marrow, that can't be dinosaur DNA, it can't be. Well, why can't it be? Well, because it, this stuff doesn't last 65 million years, so we, no it doesn't. All the experiments have shown that this is dinosaur soft tissue, and this was discovered by an evolutionist. This wasn't discovered by some young earth creationist that decided to put cow bone um, in the middle of a... She, this wasn't some creationist that decided to take some cow bone marrow and throw it into a dinosaur and say, ha ha, look what I found. No, this is a committed evolutionist. Um, and this isn't an isolated incident. There's lots of times where we end up discovering, uh, especially recently, we've started discovering more dinosaurs that aren't fossilized. We have discovered uh, things even older than that that aren't fossilized. We've discovered uh, bacteria inside of um, salt deposits that are still alive. But the salt deposits are supposed to be 250 million years old. And by the way, the the conditions that they found them in, they know that they didn't get in through a crack or anything because there's no cracks, there's no back door, if you will, for the bacteria to get inside. Um, these things are very young. They're not, you don't have, bacteria don't just sit around surviving for 250 million years inside of this tiny little isolated environment because they'd run out of food. Now, um, some of you might, not everybody knows everything about uh, bacteria. Like I said, my degree is in biotechnology. I've done a lot of microbiology work. I know about bacteria. They're not just going to sit around in this tiny little uh, rock that's, mi that's well, maybe not miles, but it's quite, a large depth below the Earth's surface. They're not just going to sit around and survive. Bacteria aren't magic. Um, it takes a lot more than just liquid water for them to survive. They need a source of energy. And by the way, there there was none. They had a little. There might have been a little bit of food in there. That's not going to last them 65 million years. Um, and without the sun, without um, some form of energy, they're they're going to die. They need food. It's just like locking a person in a basement gonna die after a while unless they have food so you know don't go lock anybody in a basement uh, please take my word for it with that one they'll die without food um, well this has basically been my video on dinosaurs creation in Noah's Ark and like I said there's scientists on both sides of this and I'm not anti-science I looked at both sides of the debate um, and there's a lot more interesting things with regards to this debate besides just dinosaurs. Um, please check out some of the, one of my, the best videos I can recommend out there is called, uh, um, Unlocking the Mystery of Life. And that was an intelligent design documentary. Um, and I also, there's one from the creation movement. Uh, it's called, uh, it's called uh, A Question of Origins. And I have uploaded a question of origins to my YouTube page. I got permission from the uh, copyright owner. And I hope you guys all enjoy those. And so this will be, I hope you all have a good day. This is Greg out.